Hello students, today we will discuss about the section of medulla oblongata at the level of sensory decussation. Now in the my first part of the medulla, we have seen the section at the level of pyramidal decussation. So my dear students, this is my sincere advice that before going to this lecture, you should first watch my lecture on the decussation uh, of pyramid. So in this today's video, we will discuss what are the important things which you are going to see in this uh, section of the medulla and how to draw this section in the exam. So you know that there are three most important levels on which you will have the questions. One is at the level of the decussation of pyramid, second is the sensory decussation and third is the olive. Now when you will see the three uh, levels, you have to keep this thing in mind that this is the lowermost level of the uh, this TS. So in this uh, section, if you will see, this is the transfer section of the medulla and this is the lowermost part where you will have the pyramidal decussation. If I am taking the section at upper part, that means we are talking about the uh, level of olive. But in the middle, you will have this decussation, that means the decussation at the level of sensory decussation. So whenever you are having the transfer sections of the medulla, you always keep this thing in mind that there are three different levels, upper, middle and lower. So today we are in some middle of the medulla and when you are having this word sensory decussation, the first thing should be always strike in your mind, what do you mean by the sensory decussation? So my dear students, whenever you are having the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, in my video of the fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus, I explained these two tracks in detail that these are the first order neurons which are present in the dorsal column of your spinal cord. Now these first order neurons which are present in the posterior white column or the dorsal part of the spinal cord terminates into the nuclei gracilis and cuneatus. So their destination is in the medulla that means the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. Now the second order neurons will arises from the these two nuclei that is the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. Now these second order neurons which are arising from these nuclei are known as internal arcuate fiber. So this is the first question from this slide. What do you mean by internal arcuate fiber? So if somebody will ask you this question, your reply has to be in one line that internal arcuate fibers are the second order neurons arises from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus in the medulla oblongata. Now these internal arcuate fibers which are actually the second order neurons exon will go and they will cross to each other. So the crossing of these fibers or you can say the decussation of these fibers with the opposite side fibers is known as sensory decussation. So now it is clear to us that whenever somebody will ask you what do you mean by the sensory decussation, my answer is that sensory decussation means the crossing of the internal arcuate fibers in medulla or you can say this is the crossing of the second order neuronal axons. Now in this image, dear students, you can appreciate this thing that we are dealing with the fibers which arises from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. So when you will see this, now here you can find out that this is your posterior column or dorsal column of your spinal cord. Now when you are ascending in the spinal cord, now you will reach up to the level of the middle of the medulla and we are talking about the sensory decussation which is almost in the middle of medulla where you can see that these fibers has been terminated into the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. The fibers those are arising from this are crossing in the uh, medulla to the opposite side and then they are ascending. So this part of your area is actually the second order neuronal fibers and these are the internal arcuate fibers. Now this ascending part is known as medial lamniscus that I will tell you in the coming slide. So whenever you are having this question in your exam, draw the transfer section of your medulla at the level of sensory decussation or in the middle of the medulla, you have to first keep this thing in mind that you have to draw the crossing of sensory fibers. That means the fibers which are carrying the sensation with the help of fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus and these are crossing in the midline. Clear? 
Now, what is the position of this crossing? Now, when you are drawing the transfer section of the medulla at sensory decussation, you know that you have to draw the crossing, but where and how? So, this is the important thing is that decussation of the internal arcuate fibers took place in anterior part of your, this medulla. So, whenever you are drawing this thing, you have to draw it on anterior to the central gray matter and posterior to the pyramids. So, in this image, you can see that these are the pyramids. And we know that pyramid occupy the ventral surface or the anterior surface of the brain stem. And you have to draw this decussation just behind the pyramid, but anterior to this central gray matter. So why you have to keep this thing in mind? Because most of the students have confusion with the decussation of pyramidal fiber. So they will show the decussation in this way. But my dear student, that is not the sensory decussation. It is a pyramidal decussation where the fibers will change their position from ventral to the lateral side. And the pyramidal tract are the descending fiber. So they will change their position as a lateral pyramidal tract. Here we are talking about the ascending fibers. These are the sensory decussation. So the fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus ascend into the posterior part as a first order neuron and they will relay in these destinations. And then the second order neurons which are arising from here going anteriorly once they will cross. So now the position also changed here but you can see that the fibers which are uh, starting or arising from these corresponding nuclei from the dorsal side now comes on the anterior side. So where is the crossing? The crossing is lies on anterior part of this section when you are drawing the TS of medulla. The internal arcuate fibers first travel anteriorly then laterally around the central gray matter and they curve medially towards the midline where they decussate with the corresponding fibers of opposite side. So decussation or the crossing means that they will go to the opposite side. Right fibers will go to the left, left fibers will go to the right. And when you are drawing this decussation, you have to draw the decussation in anterior part of the section. That means anterior to the central gray matter. Clear? Now, what do you mean by the medial laminisci? Because when you are doing the labeling of this section, first you draw the two uh, gracile and cuneate nuclei on both the side of the midline. So this is your midline. And once you are uh, having this outline of the medulla, you have to draw these two elevation. What are these two elevation? These are the tubercles, tubercle gracilis and cuneatus. Now deep to the tubercle, you will have the nuclei. And once I have drawn the nuclei, now I will draw the fibers which are crossing in the anterior part of this section. Now once the fibers will cross, they will collect at one point and these points on both the side of the midline are having a broad areas. Now this collection of the fibers are known as medial laminisci. So what is medial laminisci? As the internal arcuate fibers from the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus intercross. Now once the fibers has been crossed to the opposite side, they form a bunch of fibers or the there is a bundle of the nerve fibers which are second order neurons and this bundle of the fibers is known as medial laminiscus. So you have to keep this thing in mind that there are four laminiscus you will see in the uh, different part of the brain stem but out of the four right now you are talking about the medial laminiscus. So the most medial fibers which are from the feet and the leg come to the anterior in the medial laminiscus and the medial laminiscus is having the presentation in which the head lies posteriorly and your foot lies anteriorly. Now this is very important concept to understand here that you know fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. These are the two fasciculi or the tracts. Now you know that the fasciculus, this part receives the fasciculus gracilis and this part receives the fasciculus cuneatus. Now these fibers which are coming from the fasciculus gracilis are taking the sensation from the lower body and lower limb and this part is taking the sensation from the upper limb. Now what is happening here if you will see this crossing very carefully you will find that the fibers those are arising 
which are the second order neuron are crossing the midline and they are now placed in anterior aspect. Clear? On the contrary, if you will see the fibers which are arising from this nuclei, that is the fasciculus cuneatus, which relay in the cuneate nuclei. Now, these fibers are taking the position posteriorly in this lamniscus. So, now what is the arrangement? Now, you will see that the lower limb fibers are coming anteriorly and your upper limb fibers and cranial fibers are going posteriorly. So, in this lamniscus, the arrangement from anterior to posterior, anteriorly you will have the lower limb. So, when you will see the uh, presentation, you will find that your lower limb fibers and the foot fibers occupy anteriorly. So, you can see this crossing which is important, always you have to draw this uh, relation because it is uh, a very important question for your exam also. So, my dear students, this pattern is always be there when you are drawing the crossing of your internal arcuate fiber. So, these are the internal arcuate fibers both and when you are drawing the crossing, the crossing is in the anterior part of the section and crossing in such a way that the fibers which are arising from the nucleus gracilis comes on the anterior part of the medial lamniscus of opposite side. So, this is what do you mean by the medial lamniscus and what is the arrangement of the fibers. Now, this what you have to understand in this 3D view that this is the your ascending tract. Now, what, the, what is the name of these ascending tract? These are the fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus. Now, as they will ascend in the spinal cord and then in the lower medulla, they will reach to the middle portion of the medulla. In middle portion of the medulla, here you can see that they are relaying into their respective nuclei. So, here you can see that at this section, now the fibers has been changed their direction. So, what will happen? That changing is possible because they are crossing the midline and here what is happening that the second order neuron fibers are crossing the midline and they are coming to the opposite side and then they are ascending here. So, in this part you will see that this is your internal arcuate fibers which are then forming the medial lamniscus. Clear? Now, where to draw the position of the sensory decussation? So, we have seen that the position is in the anterior aspect. So, you have to draw it in the anterior aspect and you can see in this 3D image that the decussation is taking place here and these fibers are crossing coming anteriorly and then they are ascending. So, this part is here which we have drawn that the decussation of the sensory fibers or internal arcuate fibers took place in the anterior aspect and these are the areas which are receiving here their respective tract that means fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus. So, this is the important thing which you have to keep in mind while you are drawing this section in the exam. Now, what are the another important features which you have to draw in this section? So, there is an important thing about the gray matter. Now, the gray matter of the medulla oblongata shows the following important thing. Now, what are the important thing you will see? That you will have the nucleus gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus. Then you will have a spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Apart from that, you have accessory cuneate nucleus. Then you will have central gray matter. Now, in the central gray matter, you will have these four important nuclei, hypoglossal nucleus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, nucleus tractus solitarius and inferior olivary nucleus. Now, my dear students, when you will have this ventral surface of your brain stem, here you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are dealing with the medulla, you are dealing with the lower four cranial nerve. So, what are the lower four cranial nerve? 9, 10, 11, 12. So, here you can see that you will find the cranial nerve nuclei of 9, 10, 11, and 12. So, you will have the hypoglossal nucleus, you will have the nucleus of vagus, you will have the uh, nucleus for the taste and you will have the olivary nucleus. Apart from that, you will have some nuclei like nucleus gracilis, cuneatus, spinal nucleus and accessory cuneate nucleus. So, whenever I am drawing this section in the middle portion, almost in the midway, not higher, not at the lower level, you are passing through the lower end of the olive. Now, this is the important thing is that olive is not a prominent feature of the transfer section of medulla at sensory decussation. This has to be always in your mind that when you are drawing this olive, it is not a prominent feature of this section. 
the olive is always a prominent feature when you are drawing the uh, section at upper level. That's why that level itself is known as section of medulla at olive. It is not known as section of medulla at olive. So this has to be very clear in your mind that olive is not a prominent feature of the TS of medulla at sensory decussation. So in some books, you may not find the olive. Olive may not be seen in this section, but what is the most prominent feature? You will find the crossing of internal arcuate fiber which are forming the medial amenisci. The second important thing which you always keep in mind that when you are doing the sectioning, you have to form the pyramids which you know that they occupy the ventral surface of your this uh, brain stem. Now apart from that, there is a exit of the new uh, different cranial nerves. So what are the cranial nerves related with the medulla? Lower four cranial nerves, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So here you have to keep this thing in mind that you are drawing the nuclei of these four cranial nerves. So let's see about these important nuclei. First is the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. Now if you remember my class of the uh, TS at the level of pyramidal decussation, you know that this is your posterior horn of the spinal cord and I explained this that in the posterior horn of spinal cord this tip of the posterior horn consists or the formation of spinal nucleus. Now medial to that you are having the two more projection on both the side and these projections are known as nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Clear? But my dear students what is happening now? The shape of gray matter is completely changed. It is no, no more H shape. Now what is happening actually, the number of neurons are increasing in the size. So you can see here that both the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus are increasing in the size and this is the more pronounced areas in the medulla at the level of sensory decussation. Why they are more pronounced? Because now they are giving rise to the number of the fibers which are known as internal arcuate fibers. So because the large number of the fibers are going to arise from these nuclei, you need a large mass of the neurons. So that's why there is an increase in the size and because of this, they now separate from the central gray matter. So you will find here that because of the uh, large amount of the uh, this requirement of the cells, what is happening now, it is no more H shape and your nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus now become separate from the central gray mass. So here you can see that they are separated. Now spinal nucleus of trigeminal now, you know that it remain at its own position which is actually known as cranial continuation of the dorsal horn of your spinal cord. So this internal arcuate fibers cut off the spinal nucleus. So what is happening now these fibers which are crossing the uh, uh, anterior part going to cross anterior part first runs uh, laterally and then medially. So they are crossing, uh, they are cutting this gray matter from this central gray matter. So now that's why you are able to see that spinal nucleus is also now there is as a separate entity. So you are drawing three nucleus from medial to lateral in this section. This is nucleus gracilis, then this is nucleus cuneatus and then spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Clear? So on both the side posteriorly we are drawing one, two and three nuclei. Now what next? Now this is what I am talking always that whenever you are drawing the section you should always do the comparison. So I just explained this comparison that here you can see that these are the two nuclei which appears medial to this spinal nucleus. You cannot change the position of a spinal nucleus. Why? Because spinal nucleus is a upward continuation of substantia gelatinosa and substantia gelatinosa present on the tip of the dorsal horn. So you always keep this image which is a classical H shape gray matter of your spinal cord. So this tip is always here and this tip is always here. You cannot change the position. Now you have to add the two nuclei on both the side. Now what are the name of these two nuclei? Nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. Now what will happen in the upper part of medulla? Now all of them become separate entities. So you will draw 
three nuclei on this side and three nuclei on this side. So we are drawing one, two, three nuclei on the right side and three nuclei on the left side. Clear? Apart from that, this gray matter, which is now here, is become isolated. So there is the continuity in this lower part of the medulla, but the continuity has been uh, broken, broken into this uh, middle of the medulla. Clear? Now, you have to draw very important one more nuclei that is accessory cuneate nucleus. Now, where is the accessory cuneate? Now, as the word itself showing that it is a cuneate. So, where is your nucleus cuneatus? This is my nucleus cuneatus. Now, near to this nucleus cuneatus, you have to draw one more nuclei. This is accessory cuneate nucleus. So, my dear students, this is a very important question and you have so many multiple choice questions on this accessory cuneate nucleus. Now, what is this accessory cuneate? It is accessory to the main nuclei and this accessory cuneate nucleus is a very important feature of the medulla at this level. So, the accessory cuneate nucleus is located dorsolaterally to the nucleus cuneatus in the medulla oblongata at the level of sensory decussation. Now, what is this? This is the definition of accessory cuneate nucleus. Suppose if somebody will ask you, define accessory cuneate nucleus. Your answer is that accessory cuneate nucleus is a nucleus which is located on the dorsolateral aspect of this nucleus cuneatus in medulla oblongata at the level of sensory decussation. Now, what is the function of this accessory cuneate nucleus? This accessory cuneate nucleus is receiving the fibers from the fasciculus cuneatus which derived from the spinal cord cervical segments and it send these uh, efferents or the input to the cerebellum. Now, the fibers which arises from the accessory cuneate nucleus which are going to the cerebellum. This is the cerebellum and the fibers arising from the accessory cuneate nucleus and these fibers are known as cuneocerebellar tract. They are known as cuneocerebellar tract or they are having one more another name that is known as external arcuate fiber but they are known as posterior external arcuate fiber. So, posterior external arcuate fiber. Clear? Now, I will simplify this in the coming slide that what is the accessory cuneate nucleus and what is the need of accessory cuneate nucleus. My dear students, this is the most commonly asked question about accessory cuneate nucleus that accessory cuneate nucleus correspond with the nucleus dorsalis or Clark column of spinal cord. Why? This is the most important concept that if somebody will ask you why the accessory cuneate nucleus correspond to the class column. Now, my dear students, first we will discuss what do you mean by class column. In my class of the spinal cord and nuclei, I already told you that class column is not present in the whole length of the spinal cord. The class column is present only between T1 to L2 or L3 segments of the spinal cord. Now, what is the function of the Clark column? You know that Clark column receives these type of the sensation. Which type of sensation? Unconscious proprioception, touch, pressure and these are coming from the lower extremity and lower half of the body. Now, this lower word is important. My dear friends, try to understand this slide that what is happening here that First, you should know the function of the Clark column. Now, we will see this chart again to uh, simplify. Now, this is your T1 segment of spinal cord. You know that this is the spinal cord. Now, in this spinal cord, there are different segments. You know that the segments are there. You will have the 8 segment in cervical region, 12 segment in thoracic region and so on. Now, what is happening that suppose this is your T1 segment and this is your L2 segment. So, you will find the Clark column in this part of the gray matter of spinal cord. So, your T1 is here and your L2 and L3 is here. So, this is what is the position of Clark column in your spinal cord. 
Is it clear to everyone? Now, the next thing is that what is the function of these elongated neurons arranged in the Clark column? They are receiving the sense of unconscious proprioception touch and these are the first order neuron of dorsal root ganglia. As you know that always when you are having any input into the spinal cord, their first order neuron lies in the dorsal root ganglia. So here it is written that they, these Clark column are receiving unconscious proprioception touch pressure. These are the type of sense but from where? from the lower extremity and lower half of the body. Why? Because it is absent in this part. Now, you don't have the Clark column in the upper part. So, what is happening that the T1 spinal nerve is taking the sense T2 spinal nerve, T3, T4, T5, T7, T8, something like this. Now, up to the L2, what is happening that spinal nerves are directly taking the sense of unconscious proprioception and other sensation which are going to relay into the Clark column. Now below L2 what is happening that here you are having the fasciculus, which fasciculus? We are talking about the fasciculus gracilis. This is your fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus gracilis is present from the lower tip, lower uh, tail end to the cranial end of your spinal cord. So, if you will see the position of this tract, you will find that this tract is present in the whole length of the dorsal column of the spinal cord. So, the fibers which are entering of this S5, S4, S3, S, L5 segments, they are running along with the fasciculus gracilis and then as soon as they will reach near to this, they will terminate. Is it clear to everyone? that? This Clark column is receiving T1 to L2 segment sensation directly. Below the L2 segment, the fibers are approaching to the Clark column with the help of fasciculus gracilis and cuneator. Now, this will give rise to the posterior spinocerebellar tract. So, this posterior spinocerebellar tract will arise from the Clark column and then the sensation will reach to the cerebellum. But what about this area? What about this area? Your cervical region is having till now no contribution or the sensation of this area are not approaching to the cerebellum. So what the nature has done? The nature has created one more separate nuclei into the medulla that is known as accessory cuneate nucleus. And the, you know that this is your fasciculus cuneatus and fasciculus cuneatus is start from the T6 level. So the fibers will now join this fasciculus cuneatus which are carrying the unconscious proprioception touch sensation from this upper part. And these fibers which are running along with the fasciculus gracilis will go and relay into your accessory cuneate nuclei. So, accessory cuneate nuclei is also receiving the same sensation which are received by the Clark column. So, because they are having the same characters of the sensation, it is seen that this dorsal column or the Clark column is corresponding to the accessory cuneate nuclei of your medulla. So, since the nucleus dorsalis does not extend above T1 segment, Similar proprioceptions touch pressure efferent from the upper extremity and upper half, half of the body ascend with the ipsilateral fasciculus cuneatus and they will terminate in the accessory cuneate nuclei. So, what is happening? So, this is your accessory cuneate nuclei into the medulla. Now, here you will have this Clark column. Now, the fibers which are arising from the Clark column, they are the dorsal or you can say posterior. Uh, spinocerebellar tract. But the fibers which are arising from here are cuneocerebellar tract and these are receiving the fibers which are coming from your upper half of the body and this is receiving the fibers which are coming from the lower half of the body. Clear? But the sensations which are entering into the Clark column and into the accessory cuneate nucleus are same in the nature. What are the nature of the sensation? Unconscious proprioception, touch and pressure. 
So axons from the cuneo cerebellar tract. That means these fibers which are coming out from the accessory cuneate nucleus are known as posterior external arcuate fiber reach to the cerebellum. So as the primary afferent input, primary afferent input means the nature of the sensation that means unconscious proprioception, touch and pressure are the same in both the nuclei. That's why the accessory cuneate nucleus correspond with the nucleus dorsalis and the cuneo cerebellar tract correspond with the posterior spino cerebellar tract. Clear? So my dear students, this is again a very important question, not only in anatomy but physiology also. You have this question so many times that why we consider the Clark column corresponding with the accessory cuneate nuclei. So here in this flow chart, you can see that this is the normal thing which is easy to understand that unconscious proprioception, touch pressure sensation from the lower part of the body will first relay into the Clark column and from the Clark column or the Clark nucleus, there is origin of the posterior or dorsal spinocerebellar tract and this tract will reach to the cerebellum. Now what about the lower uh, upper part of the body? So upper extremity and upper half of the body, the same sensation that means unconscious proprioception, touch and pressure now will reach to the accessory cuneate nucleus but how they will reach with the help of ipsilateral fasciculus cuneatus. So these ipsilateral fasciculus cuneatus is going to take these sensation and they will relay into the accessory cuneate nucleus and from accessory cuneate nucleus there is an origin of the cuneo cerebellar fibers which are known as posterior external arcuate fiber. So my dear students, in today's lecture, we learn about two sets of the arcuate fiber. So here you have to understand that they are actually the three types of the arcuate fiber. Two we have learned today. What are the these fiber? Internal arcuate fiber. What do you mean by internal arcuate fiber? The fibers which arises from nucleus gracilis and cuneatus. But they will remain inside the brain stem. They will not come out. That's why they are known as internal. Now there are two sets of the external which will come out from the brain stem. Now they are coming from anterior side, then they are known as anterior external arcuate and the fibers which remain on the posterior side is known as posterior external arcuate. So posterior external arcuate which I told you right now that they arises from the accessory cuneate nucleus. Now anterior external arcuate fibers arises from arcuate nuclei. Now arcuate nuclei you will find in the section of medulla at the level of olive. So ultimately all these three sets of the arcuate fibers are the characteristic features of the medulla at three different levels. If you are talking about the internal arcuate fiber and posterior external arcuate fiber, these both are the feature of the section of medulla at the level of sensory decussation and anterior external arcuate fiber arises from arcuate nuclei and these are the features at the level of the olive. Clear? Now, so in this section what you are able to understand that when you will see the anterior surface, now on the anterior surface here you will find the presence of anterior external arcuate fiber and I told you anterior external arcuate fiber arises from, answer is arcuate nuclei. So arcuate nuclei are present here which are the part of the upper part of medulla. So when you will take the section at this level, you will find the presence of arcuate nuclei. So now there is one more thing is that this section I told you we may show the inferior olivary nucleus. So inferior olivary nucleus, you know that what is olive? Now this is the olive. Now olive is again a very important thing or the important gray matter mass but if you are having the section that is the sensory decussation, it passes through the lower end of olive. So you have the presence of the olive which is just next to the pyramid. So when you are drawing the section you have to first draw the pyramid and just next to the pyramid you have to draw the olive. But my dear students, again I am saying that this olive is not the characteristic or the pronounced feature of this section. So in some, some books you may not find the olive because olive is a prominent feature of the medulla when you are taking the section at upper part of medulla. Now what are the other things which you are going to see in the uh, gray matter? So in the gray matter I told you that you will find the nuclei of hypoglossal dorsal nucleus of vagus and nucleus tractus solitarius. So here in this central gray matter, you have to draw the nuclei from posterior to anterior side 
न्यूक्लियस ट्रैक्टर सॉलिटेरियस डॉर्सल न्यूक्लियस ऑफ वेगस एंड हाइपोग्लॉसल क्लियर नाउ वट इज न्यूक्लियस ट्रैक्टर सॉलिटेरियस अगेन यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट न्यूक्लियस ट्रैक्टर सॉलिटेरियस इज ए इलांगेटेड न्यूक्लियस विच इज प्रजेंट इन द मेड्यूला एंड इट इज ए न्यूक्लियस ट्रैक्टर सॉलिटेरियस विच इज ए कॉमन न्यूक्लियर ऑफ थ्री क्रेनियल नाउ सो वट इज द नेम ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस ट्रैक्टर सॉलिटेरियस एन फॉर नाइन्थ टी फॉर टेंथ एंड एस फॉर सेवंथ so it is a nuclei which is of three cranial nerve 7 9 and 10 so because it is having the 7 9 10 and we are dealing with the lower four cranial nerve so that's why the part of the nucleus tractor solitarius is visible here so you will have the three very important cranial nerve nuclei here what are they from posterior to anterior side you have to draw nucleus tractor solitarius then dorsal nucleus of vagus and hypoglossal nerve nucleus now what about the white matter now white matter is having the most important thing is the internal arcuate fiber decussation or the sensory decussation apart from that you have to draw the pyramid i already told you the position of pyramid in this section is most ventral then you have to draw the medial longitudinal bundle spinal tract of trigeminal nerve reticular formation anterior posterior spinocerebellar and lateral anterior spinothalamic tract so where you have to draw the spinocerebellar spinocerebellar tract are always present along the margin of your medulla on the lateral side clear then there is a one important thing is medial longitudinal bundle so medial longitudinal bundles are here and then you have to draw the reticular formation and you have to keep this thing in mind that reticular formation is present in the whole length of brain stem and in the midline here you have to draw the area of medial longitudinal fasciculus or medial longitudinal bundle so where you have to draw the pyramid again keep this thing in mind pyramid is the most anterior thing then on the side you can draw the olive behind the pyramid you have to draw the medial longitudinal fasciculus then you have to draw uh, uh, the uh, so you have to draw this medial longitudinal fasciculus and between the medial longitudinal fasciculus and pyramid there is a presence of the medial lamniscus then posteriorly you have to draw the central gray matter in which you have to draw the three very important cranial nerve nuclei hypoglossal nucleus dorsal nucleus of vagus and nucleus tractor solitarius then posteriorly you have to draw the three separate large nuclei nucleus gracilis cuneatus and spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve clear and the important thing is that in the center of the gray matter you have to draw the central canal because we are not dealing with the upper part of medulla and you know that upper part of medulla form the floor of fourth ventricle so still the canal is there it is not showing any open area in the posterior part so my dear students at the end of this session what you are able to understand that what do you mean by the sensory decussation what do you mean by the internal arcuate fiber what do you mean by the posterior external arcuate fiber what do you mean by the accessory cuneate nuclei and what are the important gray matter mass which you have to show in the diagram at the level of sensory decussation so this is all for the session thank you